All right, hello and welcome to the all demo session of the VHR um, follow-up of VMON. So what we're looking at here is the markdown file and when you download this on the community hub, it may be updated, I may have added some things to it, but this is the current draft the week before. All right, so let's uh, kill the cam. No, I don't want to do that. Let's go here and let's minimize this. And number one thing, I'm doing this with a virtual machine, which is not the best practice, but it's the easiest way to uh, demonstrate for you. So I'm going to boot the media and then hit enter real quick to jump in. Uh, first thing you'll want to do, and this is an early decision that makes a big difference, is make sure you select the hardware enabled kernel. So you have to go down one for that. Uh, that'll just make the drivers and the like make your life easier here. So let's give it a go here. I may pause the audio here, but I'm going to let the time run just so you know you get a sense of how long this goes. While that's running, I want to jump over to the markdown file. Before you start, I highly recommend you read a number of these different resources that I've identified here. And then also make sure that you kind of go in with some of the information to decided networking and then like this screen in Ubuntu setup make a big difference for your overall um, clarity of what you're going to do. But then also this will make your uh, likelihood that you didn't forget something, you know, make that good. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is select the English keyboard, continue without updating the installer. English language than English keyboard. I do have DHCP in here, but if I didn't, this is where I'd fix that. Um, I also like to make sure IPv6 is not. So let's go ahead and carry on with that. I don't need a proxy either. The default mirror is fine. Now this is the most important part, and if you're like me, it's the part you always mess up. Custom storage layout. Now I could just go, like it said here, with that 16G, 16 gig volume as the uh, install. But the dedicated sole purpose of this system is to be the VHR. So you'll see that the green box is that OS volume that I'm going to use. And then here I have 12T. And that's going to be where the Veeam backups go. All right. So here I'm going to um, use that as boot device and then format all of that, all of it, all of it, all of it fine. And then I'm going to go down to this let remaining bit here this free space and I'm going to add this all of it not fine there I'm going to change it to XFS and a very intentional um, thing here let me zoom in and explain what I'm doing so you know, I'll just take all the space and then I want to use the XFS file system explicitly so I can have the block cloning and then the other thing this is a straight up Rickism here I like to do VHR as that you know, mount. So that way, when I'm in the system, the top level path is forward slash VHR. That's where um, I can always find those Veeam backups path, right? So it looks good to me. Let's do it. Warning about data destruction. Sure. Um, so then you're going to ask questions about the server identity. So um, Uh, and let me go back to the markdown here in a second. I'll explain what I'm doing. So again, this is the outside of storage. This is the one thing I might mess up the most. And so I'm going to check my notes, right? And so this is my plan, VHR dash admin. Make sure I have the dash. Names are all looking good. Okay. So I just want to make sure I have that right. And I do want to go for SSH. I'll explain why. And then I don't need any of those other jams. Let's do it. So right now, this is being installed. It's being built as we speak. You know, the Ubuntu is being deployed with the options we've selected. And then after that's complete here momentarily, it's going to take a few updates for the components. Now, this is also a good time to make sure that your Veeam server is ready. So I'm showing this by itself, but I'm assuming you already have a Veeam server deployed. Um, I recommend that done ahead of time because then you can kind of proceed down the path of the VHR deployment pretty straightforward. I'm going to jump back over to the markdown file real quick. I'll see a couple of other things I want to highlight. 
Um, yeah, definitely get those networking bits set up. And then once this is done, I'm going to put that in here. And Hannes, uh, who else also did this presentation along with me with Christoph, you know, truly a, a lot of great resources here. He's got incredible perspective uh, from the product team. And then we've driven a whole bunch of innovations with what we're doing here with the VHR. So um, good stuff. Now, one other thing I want to highlight is over in Help Center. We'll go back to this, uh, back to that, yeah. One thing I want to highlight is back over in Help Center, you're going to want to come here to this section right here because we're going to get into this, okay? So remember this for a second. We should be almost done momentarily. Curious, see how busy this one looks when it is being born. A little busy. Yeah, not too bad. days. Now, I always mess this up, but I'm going to do this now to eject the, the ISO. Well, it says it failed anyway, so it is unmounted. Okay. Again, the physical world is going to be best for you here, so it's going to boot up. First time, give this a moment. This is also a good time to um, double check the actual IP that you get. You know, you can always go into the UI, but um, since I'm using a VM 200 easy one, let's do the easy. So should come back in here momentarily. Maybe. Oh, it changed. Look at that. Well, so DHCP isn't all that it's made out to be now, is it? All right, 180. All right, see if we're looking good here. Almost. Yeah, that's probably where it'll end up. Right, so I'm going to log in as that account I had. Okay, so now I'm going to then jump right into this, okay? So this user already exists. You could do a separate one. I'm going to use VHR admin. The path already exists, right? So you almost are saving a step with my mount the way I roll, okay? So now I'm a horrible typer, so I need to see it at the same time. So now we would do, let's do, uh, let's, let's be context right here. All right, so let me just go first of all to VHR. You'll see nothing's there, but let's do this command to change ownership. No, I don't need to change it, but it's to uh, VHR admin VHR. And okay, and then 
change the mode. Looking good. All right, cool. So now I'm going to go into Veeam BNR and let's go into this one. And let's go into your backup infrastructure. And I've got some Linux systems in here, but let's add another one. Um, I know it's 180, so I'm going to just put it in. And again, this might be a good time to step out and do your DNS, by the way. But I'm just going to use IP. Um, super, super important, single-use credentials. And single-use doesn't mean throw them away, but um, don't keep them with the Veeam server, right? Okay, looking good in the neighborhood. Don't tell me it changed its IP address. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I'm spooked. Okay, so what this is doing is this is establishing a connection to get those Veeam services, the installer and transport in there. So we're going to basically allow those to be pulled down from the VHR system. So let this go for a moment. Yeah, I'm actually done here, so I could log out. I'm done with that one. Cool. All right. So now we can go into our repositories, and I'm going to add one. And uh, the VHR will be the type DAS, direct attached storage. And it's got a you know menu driven type here, which is awesome. So let's do this. Don't really need to um, scream with all caps, but this is a lab, I can do that. Now it found that is the only candidate available or single-use credentials and uninventoried Linux systems as a repo, but if you had multiple, it would do that. All right, so let's uh, put my one option during install to work. You'll see here it is. Um, small best practice recommendation. You could do something like uh, VPS, RV, RTM. So this is right here. This is the name of this Veeam server. I'm using RD, uh, C man over here, as you can see. Just a self-documenting name. So if you found this Ubuntu server by itself, you would at least know what backups it came from. Not necessary, but, you know, another Rickism here. Uh, by default, it's 7. Good for me, but this is why we're here, doing that. Now, it's very, very important that you go through this wizard and watch some of the steps. You want to make sure at the end here, First of all, the XFS fast clone requirements met is one. Services are there. Happy days. This right here. This is going to come by with, right after this step, it's going to do a test right there. Um, the restricted mode, the right permissions. This right here is an important test to make sure everything from XFS to immutability is going to be as you expect it, and it is. Cool. So then this means I can get into a backup job of just say and say example 12, VHR demo, and I could put something in there, just put the whole thing, oh, that could be big. Um, let me put something small, like the old cluster. That's not that small, but you get the point. And there it is, right? And so basically anything that's going in there is going to come in with that immutability. Um, let, it, let it go, right? And then, then you have your uh, VHR made. All right, if you like what you see, man, here, you know, drop me a comment on the uh, community hub. And big thanks to Hannes and Christoph for helping me rock out this content. This was the 
back and forth, number one, number two, most pre-reg session at VMON. The VHR doesn't have to be hard, but here's yet another resource to help you get started. Start a discussion if you need some more advice here, but uh, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of VMON, and thanks for watching this video.